What are you saying guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Isa and I'm a student doctor studying in London. This video is going to be about how you can lose weight specifically in Ramadan. Now, you may have tried this in the past or this may be your first time, but either way you really want to optimize your results. For a lot of people, their weight tends to stay the same throughout Ramadan, but for overweight or obese individuals, they lose weight, but it's only temporary because Ramadan ends and they start gaining the weight back again. If you do want to see a video on how you can stop that from happening and maintain your body composition after Ramadan's ended, do let me know in the comments below. But like I said, this video is gonna be about how to lose weight within the roughly 30 day period of Ramadan itself. Now to do this, I've looked at a lot of studies, research, collating all this information together so that you don't have to, and combining it with my medical knowledge to formulate a plan. And so in this video, we're gonna go through how you can optimize your training, your diet, your fluid intake, sleep, which of course is very important. And finally, I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm going to be doing for this Ramadan to show you an example of how you can implement it and we'll summarize at the end. Now, there may be some fear, uncertainty and doubt about doing this in Ramadan. You may think of low energy levels, lack of sleep and dehydration, meaning that you can't actually fulfill these goals, if not physically, then just mentally lacking the willpower. There's the idea that because of suboptimal nutrition and a lack of exercise, combining this with a low calorie diet may exacerbate the problem of losing your muscle and a catabolic state. But this was one study which found that individuals during Ramadan who weren't even actually training managed to maintain all their muscle mass and did not enter this so-called catabolic state. In addition, they suggest that to take further precautions and minimize the risk of losing muscle, you can increase your protein intake and carry out resistance training. And we're gonna talk about both of them in just a second. Before committing to this fat loss program, you also want to reevaluate your goals and consider what you want to gain out of Ramadan. You can make the argument that Ramadan is primarily to focus on your spiritual well-being and to focus on other things, increasing your Iman and also appreciating the things that we have more and maybe developing in other ways other than focusing on physical physical health. And of course that is a valid argument and if you want to do that that's perfectly fine. There was a study which showed that detraining during a six week on three week off period was almost the exact same as continuously training for nine week period. Um, I'll link the study down below. So if you're worried about taking a resistance training break during Ramadan and it leading to you losing your muscle, you can have a look at this study. It's to do with something called muscle memory. And so you can rebound quickly even after taking a break such as in Ramadan. Having said that, it is possible to lose weight during Ramadan while continuing to do exercise, continuing to do other things and being more productive, whether you have school or work. It comes down to careful planning and it is going to be harder than usual, but that is the whole point of this video, to help prepare you for what is to come. And we're going to do this together, so I'm going to be posting updates on my Instagram, you can follow it and we can do this together. But before we go into the video, we just need to quickly recap how we actually lose fat in the first place. So it's called the calorie deficit. This is a very important term and it refers to burning more calories than we consume. We consume calories obviously from food and that's why we have to make sure our diet is on point. And we burn calories not only at rest while our body is just carrying out various physiological processes and functions, but also with exercise and just day-to-day -day life. So it's getting the balance right and making sure that you're burning more, which is actually gonna allow you to lose weight. That means that despite all the various advantages of doing exercise, we don't actually need to do it in order to lose weight and burn fat. We can instead focus on reducing our calorie intake and that way we are in a calorie deficit. Personally, I like to continue training during Ramadan because it reduces stress, improves your sleep, it's enjoyable and also it can increase the amount of muscle mass or at least help maintain it. Let's start with training. So cardio is the most effective exercise you can do to burn calories. There are two types, anaerobic, which is intense, circuit workouts, for example, and aerobic, which is more of a slow paced running, cycling, jogging, or even just walking. Now that second option is preferable during Ramadan because a study found that anaerobic activity, high intensity, really drains you out during the day. We probably didn't need the study to tell you this, but also the performance of high intensity activity is reduced, and so there's a potential of it leading to injury, whereas aerobic is more slow paced, you can go on an evening walk before iftar for example, and around 10,000 steps will burn around 500 calories. 
Now resistance training, or weight training in this case, is also favorable to do during Ramadan. The main way it helps with fat loss is that it maintains or increases your muscle mass and that helps raise your metabolism and that helps obviously burn more calories. It's also just more fun to do in my opinion. I enjoy working out with weights and that's obviously gonna help on a mental level um, with motivation and sticking to the program, something to look forward to. Now in terms of frequency with the cardio, you can do it every day or every other day. Going for an evening walk is probably the easiest for most of us. And with the resistance training, I'd say no more than two to three times a week because you wanna avoid burnout because it can be quite taxing on your body. Remember, recovery is also gonna be impaired. So we wanna factor that in as well. So I recommend doing three times a week, one day of upper body, one day lower body, and the third day can just be whatever you feel like doing on that day. And if you're wondering what time of day to work out, there's three main options. The first is in the morning, the second is before iftar, and the second is after iftar. Now there's positives and negatives to each one, so it kind of depends on your lifestyle, your other commitments and things going on, but we'll just briefly run through each one. So the benefits of training in the morning is that you have food in your system, you have glycogen stores, you have protein stores, and you're well rested because you've slept, so you might perform better. The downside is that you're not able to replenish those stores and hydrate yourself afterwards. You may be thirsty throughout the day and it can impact your energy levels. So if you are someone who um, works or if you just have a really busy day in general, um, this, may op this option may not be for you. Now, if you want to train right before iftar instead, just remember you're going to be dehydrated, have low energy levels, maybe less concentration and put less effort into your exercise. But afterwards, you are able to immediately replenish yourself with fluids, get your protein in and also glycogen stores back up. Now, the third option is to work out after iftar. And the benefits is going to be that you can eat and drink before, during and after your exercise. So the recovery benefits may be good, but you also have to remember that it can impact your sleep as well and disturb your circadian rhythms if you're working out that late into the night. You also have to remember that it may depend on whether or not your gym is open that late if you're working out in a gym. Um, home workout should be fine. And it also means that you may have to miss taraweeh prayers, for example, um, and miss out on doing things in the nights of Ramadan. And also just to mention for the weight training, you may decide to do light weights with high reps instead of using heavy weights because that can be more taxing on recovery. And also you may be more dehydrated, lack of concentration, and that may lead to injury when you're using high weights. I will let you guys know at the end of this video exactly what I'm going to be doing and why. Now let's talk a bit about the diet. You want to try and reduce your calories by about 100 to 500 below your normal maintenance level and you can kind of adjust it based on how quickly or how slowly you are losing weight when you're tracking it with your scale. Ideally, you want to be tracking the calories you're eating exactly with a calculator or an app such as MyFitnessPal which is the most commonly used. but Obviously, when you're tired at the end of the day and you're hungry, it may just be unsustainable to try and calculate your calories, especially if you're having home meals or communal feasts and dinners um, where you can't actually track what's in the food. In that case, you can incorporate some techniques which I'm about to go through. So for iftar, what's most important, first off, you break your fast with a date, for example, Edgewa dates, and this is a simple carbohydrate, which means it's giving you a glucose surge, a glucose boost. This is gonna help you regain energy, feel a bit better, and make better decisions, probably. After that, you wanna try and get in some protein. You can do this with a protein shake, which is nice and quick. There's two main reasons you wanna get protein in. So the first one is to increase your overall protein intake, because we know this helps with metabolism. I did a whole video on metabolism. You can check that out on how protein boosts it here. Um, it's also going to help with your um, muscle mass and increasing muscle. And the second reason is because it actually increases satiety and makes you feel fuller for longer, which is quite ideal when you're having fewer calories in the first place. Within iftar is also when you want to replenish your salt levels, because if you leave this too late at Sahur, you might just be thirsty throughout the day. So instead, try to have it at iftar when you can um, compensate it with water and kind of combat any thirstiness but you do need to replenish your salt levels at some point and this is the ideal time to do that. You also want to have some complex carbohydrates, so things like bread, 
pasta, rice. This is going to help replenish glycogen stores in the muscle. Glycogen is used for daily activity, it's stored in our muscles and our liver, and it's one of the ways that we store energy within our body. Now, if you are not tracking calories, one of the techniques you can use is to avoid having a lot of carbohydrates at dinner and focus mainly on having them at suhoor. We'll get to the reasons for that in just a second. The third thing you want to have during iftar is high fiber. Anytime you're having a high protein content, you want to try and match this with fiber because it helps digest the protein and is also good for gut health in general. Now let's talk a bit about suhoor. So first of all, you want to try it eating salty foods as we mentioned earlier because you're going to be feeling thirsty when you wake up and throughout the day. And secondly, this is when you can have more of your carbohydrates and the reason for this is that it increases your blood glucose levels which are known to drop throughout the day during Ramadan. Having this early on in iftar instead might not have the same impact as it does having on having it at suhoor time instead which can help boost concentration and productivity throughout the day. Specifically, you want to try have low glycemic index carbohydrates. This can help you feel fuller for longer but more importantly it helps sustain the blood sugar levels even more than high glycemic index carbohydrates and so potentially boost productivity activity. Examples include oats, hummus, whole grain pasta and I'll leave a link in the description to a full list. Now let's talk about water content and fluid intake and this relates to the topic of expectations as well and there's two main ones I wanted to talk about. First off is that you need to expect that you're going to be dehydrated and this is going to impact your performance either in the workplace but also in the gym. You may not be able to lift the same amount of weight as you can or do as many reps and that's normal. But you also have to remember that these levels of dehydration aren't dangerously low and they can be replenished at iftar time provided you're not an endurance athlete or training in the heat for example there was a study that found that this level of dehydration is absolutely fine as long as you replenish it at iftar time now the second expectation is to do with weight loss so if you are going on this weight loss program during the first week of ramadan is when you'll see the most amount of weight lost and most of it is probably due to water weight now there was a study that found that during the first week of Ramadan is when we lose the most amount of water weight. And this because of one, being more dehydrated. And the second is because our blood sugar levels are low throughout the day because we're in a fasted state, the body uses glycogen stores instead, which is stored in our muscles and in our liver. And the water that is used to keep it there is lost in the process. So this is why during the first week, we experience a lot of water weight loss. But the study found that towards the end of Ramadan, the body adapts. It reduces urine production and reduces sweat production to help combat the dehydration. And towards the end is when you actually see the fat loss contributing more to the weight loss itself. Having addressed those things, the most important thing when it comes to water intake is making sure you're staying well hydrated during the period that you're allowed to drink. Now, a link in the description goes to an article written by Dr. Roy J. Shepard, who is a sports doctor, and recommends drinking around 1.6 litres of water. Now, he suggests having most of it at suhoor time but to keep you more hydrated throughout the day. And last but not least, we're going to talk about sleep. Now, a lot of people are already chronically sleep deprived and the effects become more apparent during Ramadan when it might be around exam times where the workload may be increased and you're having to stay up late into the night either doing prayers or eating late into the night as well. The main way to combat this is to consciously make an effort to sleep on time and you can take precautions such as we discussed earlier of not training too late into the night to the point where it disturbs your sleep cycle rhythm. You can also make up for any sleep lost during the evening, a common strategy used which you're probably familiar with already. Sleep is of course very important not only for productivity, not only for recovering your muscle and your whole body from the exercise you're doing, but it also helps prepare you mentally for the next day and will help you increase motivation and adhere to this program and actually lose weight by the end of Ramadan. So having said all of that, let's now summarize and at the same time I'll let you know what I'm going to be doing personally. So to start off, we spoke about training and how it's not even actually necessary, but I will actually be doing it for the other various benefits and to help increase muscle mass. So I will be doing cardio. We spoke about going for walks in the evening and also actually doing resistance training, which is weight training in this example in the gym. Um, personally, I will be doing it right before iftar because although the I am dehydrated and maybe low energy levels, I often feel fine when I'm doing a fasted workout. And to be honest, I'm going to be doing a low weight with high reps and just kind of enjoy it a bit more as opposed to doing high uh, weight. 
and this is going to help uh, replenish myself afterwards as well when I'm going to be eating during iftar. The reason I'm not doing it in the morning is A because I have early starts, I'm going to be starting my surgical rotation soon and secondly because I actually need energy throughout the day which will all be used up in that workout. I won't be doing it after iftar because I'm aiming to be productive at night and to get a lot of things done at night because my day will be primarily um, based on the wards in the hospital. And in terms of frequency, I'll be doing weight training three times a week, upper body, lower body, and the third day, just something I enjoy. And perhaps every day that I'm not going to the gym, doing cardio in the form of an evening walk or even a jog, we'll see how it goes. So we spoke about nutrition and how it's ideal to track it, although personally I won't be tracking it just because there's going to be a lot of other stuff going on and I don't think it's necessarily sustainable and I do have a pre-existing knowledge of roughly how many calories are in each thing. What for Iftar we spoke about what to include such as protein, salt, carbohydrates, mix of simple and complex and also staying hydrated of course. And for Suhoor having these low glycemic index carbohydrates, which again are in the description below, which are going to help you feel fuller for longer and prolong your blood sugar levels and keep you concentrated. In terms of fluids, we spoke about expecting to lose water weight initially and also the importance of staying hydrated. Personally, I'm going to be trying to drink 1.5 to 2 litres of water within that period from uh, Maghrib to uh, Fajr. And finally, for sleep, although I'd love to sleep well into the day, surgical rotations are infamous for having really early starts and so that's just not possible. Um, I'm probably not going to get enough sleep at night time and so what I will be doing is as we spoke about supplementing that with evening naps or even afternoon naps depending on when I finish. But thanks everyone for watching, that concludes the video. I hope this benefited you, you learned something new and hopefully you're feeling more motivated now. Remember to drop me a follow on Instagram, drop me a message and we can motivate each other during this Ramadan. But having said that, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe, like the video if you liked the video and share with your friends who also might be looking to lose weight during Ramadan. But having said that, work hard, work smart and I'll see you in the next video.